You have something special. You have greatness in you. I want you to like this page and share it. I got a message for you. There's something that's been on my mind. I want to share with you on this beautiful, beautiful day. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I want you to think about the fact that this is the fourth quarter, the fourth quarter. And I want you to think about finishing strong and preparing for 2023. And, I, and, 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 and something that I'm encouraging you to do, and I want you to like this page and share it. I want you to ask yourself some questions. And just about three. One of them, where you are right now, is it what you anticipated when you started the year off? Is it alignment with your resolutions? <laughs> because if you follow what I'm going to share with you, if you are willing to give up who you've been, the negative people, the thoughts, and the choices that's produced what you now have, if it does not measure up to your level of expectation. And you know, as, as Einstein said, insanity is doing the same thing in the same way, expecting a different outcome. If you want to have, create a different outcome, you got to do some things differently. You got to change some relationships. You got to do what Celeste Johnson said, Operation clean slate you got to get some people out of your life you got to come out from among the people where you are you know people who earn 15 20 30 40 50 thousand a hundred thousand dollars a month don't hang out with people who earn five and seven thousand dollars a month no you got to upgrade your relationships one of the things when i when i begin to understand the statement come out from among them i left miami in a greyhound bus I had too many poor people in my life, <laughs> okay? Family members and friends. I had to get out of there. Why? God said to Abraham, get up and go to a new land. Sometimes you've got to change where you are. A place, you, you got a place that is your place. Trust me on this. The things that I've accomplished, I would have never accomplished those things in Miami. I had to go to some other place. You have a divine place. And there are certain relationships you'll never ever do anything with those people. Why? Because they're not the one. Where you are is your rightful place, where your thoughts, your thinking, and your choices have brought you. Where you can be is your true place. Come on, somebody. I'm coming. Just slow down. Just slow down. I'm coming. <laughs> I'm coming. Yeah. I mean, think about it. It's this fourth quarter. And so you want to look at your life and say, wait a minute, what got me here? Because you don't want to get to the end of 2022 and say, oh my God, I didn't do all the things that I was capable of doing. No, no, evaluate. Because there are certain places, there are certain choices, there are certain behaviors, there are certain people that you just don't need to be a part of your life. Let, let me give you an example in my own life. Like for instance, I I got up this morning and I, I take the medication that they had placed me on. Notice I didn't say my medication. I'm not claiming it. The medication they put me on. My goal before the end of the year is to be off all medication. What major goal do you have before the end of the year so that you can look back and say that 2022 brought out the best in you? I'm not asking you to have four and five different things that you'll focus on. I'm, I'm just saying to you and just requesting what, what major area of your life in mind, I'm focusing on my health, my making cancer history, my getting off all this medication. I've been able to get off my insulin. Why? Because I'm focused. I want you to put down focus. Focus on one thing. One thing that's important to you. One thing that will make a dramatic difference in your life. One thing that when you accomplish that, you can pat yourself on the shoulder and say, I've done good. Because at the end of the day, life is about choices. 
Choose ye this day whom ye shall serve. But most of us, and I'm using myself as an example, for a long time, I was just coasting toward an accelerated end. I, 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 I just decided I'm going to be mindful. I don't want to take medication for the rest of my life. I don't want to be sticking myself for the rest of my life. Then what are you going to do about it? I dramatically began to focus and tune everything else out, saying my health is my wealth. That sounds nice, rhymes, nice. I, and I'm backing it up with action. I'm mindful of what I eat. I'm mindful of my state of mind. I'm mindful of my peace. What is it you're going to do? What differently? Uh, how are you going to show up? We're in the fourth quarter. It's a, and I want you to write this down. It's time to close chapters and turn the page. Come on, somebody. Yes, it's time. There's some chapters you need to close. They've gone beyond their expiration date. Some people come to your life for a season, some for a reason, and some for a lifetime. And when I made a list of the people that I communicate with, there's some calls I don't take anymore. Why? Because it's a gimme call. Yeah. That, that, that if you look at it, the majority of your calls are gimme calls. There's a limited number of people saying, hey, I got something for you. Just look at the ratio. Look at it. Evaluate it. You have people who are always there when they need you. Life ain't playing with us. And we don't need to be playing with life. <laughs> Come on, I'm telling you. I'm not making this stuff up. Life is for laughing, loving, and living. It doesn't have to be all that complicated. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm telling you, this is a time you don't want people who get on your last nerve and stress you out being around you or in your ear. Come out from among them. <laughs> and don't try to change them. A person changed against their will is of the same opinion still that they are okay just as they are. <laughs> you have no right to weigh in on how they live their lives. I don't care if it's your children or your family members, friends. No, people got a choice. That's, that's, that's what God has given us all, a choice. And their choices, a friend of mine, Patricia Wingard out of Columbus, Ohio, the choices and consequences. Mmm. Listen to me, listen to the old rascal. Yes, I've been on the planet for 77 years. I know some stuff. Now listen, I'm, I'm looking for some people. I'm looking for the few. This is not for everybody. I'm just looking for the few. You know what I decided to do? What did you decide to do? I'm going to build a culture of greatness. People who have goals and dreams People who want to do something dramatically different with their lives, who want to finish the year strong, people who want to get a jump start on 2023, people who have things that they want to accomplish to improve their health, improve their relationships, get a game plan and a blueprint on how they can begin to, to bring out the greatness in them. If that's you, touch the link above. That's all. It's not for everybody. It's because see, and, and here's something that we must learn to do. And it's it's not easy. Learn how to become an observer. I've learned how, and it took some time because I'm a uh, they call me an empath. Most people, ladies and gentlemen, won't participate in their own rescue. I have a friend, <laughs> I said some, some videos on people who had, who've made dramatic changes in their lives and and who had lost a lot of weight and, and they had instructions on how they did it. So I said this to a friend of mine, I weigh over 400 pounds. You know, they, though she asked me, are you calling me fat? 
I said, no. <laughs> I didn't call you nothing. I just sent you some stuff that I thought maybe that you might be interested in. No, I did not call you fat. And I'm saying to myself, did this person ask me that question? This person who came to my house and sat in the chair, in the chair, broke and said, oh, hell no. What? If you want to learn how I earned my first million against all odds, you, you ever hear politicians talk about the middle class? They never talk about the 1%. They don't want you to become 1%. I'm a part of the population who's earned over a million dollars. That's just 1% of the population done that. I've done that. You come into the community, if you give me one year with you, see, you... Your network, and George Frazier said this best, your network determines your net worth. Did you hear what I just said? Your network determines your net worth. And when you're in a community with me, with like-minded people, people that are focused on their dreams and improving themselves, people who are tuning out the negative, toxic behavior and, and, and people that will compromise your power, we have energy. All of us, that energy, if you don't use it well, it will work against you. If you use it well, it will help you to take responsibility for your life and create the kind of life that you're proud of. I'm telling you what I know. And if that's you, come on, join me. I, I believe that life is for living, for loving, and being healthy, and, and leave, living a meaningful life, a purposeful life. Why, why purposeful? Well, because it narrows your choices. I, I spent time talking to my son last night. I said, you know, I said, I don't have a void in my life because I don't know who my father was that I'm aware of. I'm adopted, okay? But what I was saying to him, I said, the conversation but that I'm going to have with you right now is a conversation if I knew my father that he would have with me. And right now, I'm feeling that. I'm going to, I'm going to talk to you and share some things with you that I've seen, that I've experienced. And ultimately, it's your call. It's your choice. But I've seen a thing or two. I know a thing or two. I can't make the choices for you. All I can share with you to minimize the, 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 the pain and, and disappointment and just living a life that's not you, that does not represent the highest that's within you. I'm, I'm going to talk to you now about some things that, that I'm encouraging you to do so that your future you, your future life that's in you will say, man, I'm glad you did that. Wow, I'm glad you made that choice. I said, are you with me? He said, yes, sir, dad. I said, don't, don't you have anything to say? Well, he said, well, I'm not gonna argue for my limitations. All right, because I was telling him about something. I said, you don't want to do that. That's, a, that's, that's not going to help you. Make choices and ask yourself the question, is this going to bring the best out of me? Is, is this moving my life and the direction that represent the highest that is within me? Or is this going to take me down a path at some point in time I will regret that I made this choice. Robert Frost, come forth. 
please. Two roads diverge in a yellow wood, and I, I selected the road less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. The road to life is straight and narrow, and few there be that find it, because few there be that are willing to be disciplined. Few there be that are willing to listen. Few there be that are coachable. Few there be that are willing to leverage the experiences of other people so they can maximize their impact in this thing called life. You can't tell them anything. There's nothing worse than arrogance and ignorance. People who think they know and they don't know. If, you, if you're not one of those people and, and, and you're ready to be coached or you're ready for breakthrough thinking as Dr. Stan would say, Dr. Breakthrough, yeah, yeah. Hello, I got it like that. As, as Reverend Ike would say, you can't lose with the stuff I use. <laughs> oh, behave. <laughs> Why are you laughing? You got to laugh today. You got to, you, you got to find ways and create special moments. I'm, I'm creating a moment that we spend together. You're going to be saying to some of your friends, you know what? I watched that crazy boy, Les Brown, Mamie Brown's baby boy. He had me rolling, child. He need, he, he need some help. He a little touch of the head, really. He, now he cut his flat top off, too. Yeah, he used to be looking like kid in play from house party. Yeah, he used to cut the flat top off. Somebody got to him. <laughs> no, they did not. Did not, not, not. I just did it because it's a new year. I'm going to get it done in 21. There's some things I'm determined to do, determined to accomplish. What is it that you're determined to do? That you are determined to accomplish, that you've been going at it again and again and again, and, and, and you fail, and now you're ready to quit, or you've already quit. I'm saying to you, come, Lazarus, come forth. Had to call him three times. Come on, you, you got the power to come out of there. Lazarus, didn't you hear me? You know something. People watch and say, you know, I think Jerusalem Slim has lost it. He called him, we told him the man's dead. Yeah, a lot of people walking around with a lot of potential in them that's dead. Greatness in them, that's dead. Genius in them, that's dead. Abilities and talents that need to be resurrected, that's dead. Greatness and, and abilities to change the world that need to be called forth three times. Lazarus, come forth. Whoa, wow. He said, brothers and sisters start running from everywhere. Oh, my Lord, good Lord. That's a good goo moo <laughs> They said, he's on fire. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Wow. The distance that I have traveled so far is longer than the distance I have left. Is that the same for you? We don't know how much time we have left. If that's the same for you, have you had some setbacks and failures and, and you have convinced yourself it can't be done? No. Change your approach, but don't change your decision. Get some help because by changing your approach and getting some help, you can take your performance and your impact to another level. By getting the right help and the right coaching, you can live a life that will outlive you. Oh, you have greatness in you. Yes, yes, absolutely you do. It's not judged by how much money you have or your materialistic possessions. It's not judged by that. No. No. I've never seen an ambulance or hearse at a funeral carrying some money behind it or furniture or a home and dragging all that stuff out to the cemetery. No. They don't bury you with homes, with your brand new car, your Rolex watch. No, no, you're gonna leave it all here. 
when Howard Hughes, who was the richest man in the world, died, he, somebody asked on the plane, how much did he leave? And the answer was, all of it. <laughs> Guess what? Vi Clark, my friend who passed, she said, life don't owe me any change. I've lived life my way. Live your life in such a way that life don't owe you any change. Or you got a goal, a dream. Just say, you know, I got this, this, this dream that that keeps showing up and and it's up in my face, something that I want to do with my life. Okay, all right. I got you. I know that. I had this golden dream of buying my mother home. And I did it. I did it. I'm working with somebody right now who they have the same dream. I said, good. I'm going to show you how to do that. It came to me. And they, we have a form that people fill out where we vet and find out what is it you want to do? What's your goal? What's your dream? You are hungry to win. If you're hungry to overcome your fears, if you're hungry to learn how to use your voice, if you're hungry to live a larger life, if you're hungry to live a life of adventure, Helen Keller said that life is either a daring adventure or it's boring. If you're hungry to transition out of a job that's not you and want to learn how to do something that is you, if you are in that kind of place and you know that you just feel it in your heart of hearts the best is yet to come the best in me is yet to come what i've gone through will not define me the best is yet to come greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world the best is yet to come you are more than a conqueror the best is yet to come be with that know that and live your life from that place of power. So ladies and gentlemen, here's something. I, 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 want to, I want you to listen to me very closely. I have a message for you. Releasing the past and embrace, embracing the newness of life. The newness of life. And when you do that, you are willing to make a radical change on how you show up. When I was in pursuit of my goal and dream of becoming a motivational speaker, before I got any speaking engagements, I used to, and I'm talking about to be paid, I used to go to the shopping mall after walking around Belle Isle for about five or six times in Detroit, saying I'm the world's greatest orator. I wasn't being braggadocious. I hadn't even been paid to speak yet, but I was calling forth those things that be not as though they were. And, and then I would get dressed up and go to the shopping mall. And I want you to write this down, three feet principle, three feet principle, that I practice the three feet principle. And that, <laughs> and that is talk to people, write this down. I practice talk to people. I, I would talk to anybody that got within three feet of me. Hi, my name is Les Brown. And I'm a motivational speaker. Do you or anyone you know that can use my services? And, and if that doesn't work, guess what? I'll talk to more people. <laughs> it's called a TTP principle. A TTM principle. Write this down. TT, talk to people. And then talk to more people. TTMP. About your business about your product, about the things that you want to do with your life and where you're going. And you have no idea on how that's going to manifest itself. You have no idea. If you just if, listen to me every day, I'm gonna give you something to do. You get an assignment and, and the assignment now is, is talk to people, the TTMP talk to more people and we're going to do this all virtually 
because I'm not going out to shop mall now. I don't go to shop mall. I'm in the house. I don't go anywhere. Tyrone and I, we stay in the house. We keep social distancing from each other. Oh, if you didn't know, Tyrone is a squirrel that he taught me squirrely. We talk to each other every day. So, so back on point. And so therefore, you, you want to find ways to communicate and reach people and talk to a minimum of seven people every day about your goal, about your dream, and ask, do you or someone you know that will be helpful to me? Case in point, I was catching a plane from Detroit. I was living at the Riverfront Apartments to Chicago, and by maybe about five people on the plane. I sat by a guy named Lafayette Jones. I don't know what happened to Lafayette Jones. Somebody out there know Lafayette Jones. And we both were born on February the 17th. It's our birthday. I said, you born February 17th? He said, yes. I said, so was Michael Jordan and Jim Brown. He says, is that right? He said, what do you do? I said, I'm glad you asked. I'm a motivational speaker. I'm going to become known and famous for that. Can you or someone you know use my services? He said, whoa. He said, man, I work for Robert Johnson, Johnson Products, and our speaker canceled. He said, are you good? I said, that's what people say. <laughs> he said, how much do you charge? At that time, I didn't know how much to charge. Listen to this. Listen to me. Are you listening? I said, how much have you allocated? He said, $5,000. I looked at him. Is, 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 are you all right, brother? I said, did you say $5,000? He said, yes. Well, I didn't answer right away because I didn't want to speak in unknown tongues. <laughs> oh my goodness! I never had five thousand dollars for a speech in my life. I got love offerings for five dollars and twenty-five dollars that showed that they didn't love you anymore. We love you, but Jesus loves you more. <laughs> I said, yes. <laughs> so. Then, but I furthered the conversation. I said, Lafayette, I'm, I'm going to be on the Robert Shuler show. He said, is that right? Yes, Millennials, this used to be a, a nationally televised ministry. He said, when? I said, I don't know exactly. Do you know Robert Shuler or know someone who knows Robert Shuler? He said, yes, my boss does. He gave him a million dollars for his ministry. I said, are you kidding? Now, mind you, I've been saying this and asking this question for two years. Did anybody that got within three feet of me, I would say I'm a speaker. Do you or someone you know can use my services? And I'm gonna be on the Robert Shuler Show. Televised ministry. You got to call forth those things that be not as though they were. There's power. You, as a friend of mine, billionaire PA, speak your dream into existence. And, and he said, my boss knows him, Robert Johnson. I said, is that right? I did the event. I spoke. At the end, I got a standing ovation. And Mr. Johnson ran to the podium. He said, who are you? I said, I'm Les Brown, Mrs. Mamie Brown's baby boy. He said, man, you were good. You saved the day. He said, man, if I can ever do anything for you, let me know. I said, do you know Robert Shuler? He said, yes, I gave a million dollars to his ministry. I said, I want to be on his program. He said, you got it. The next day at Riverfront Apartments, I got a phone call. Hello? Hi, this is Les Brown. This is Robert Shuler. Robert Shuler? Yes. Wow. Wow. Hold it just a minute. I got to go to the bathroom. I'll be right back. Put the phone down. Ready? It's number one. It's number one. Then I came back. Hello? <laughs> <laughs> you can't make this up. 
mom, I was so excited. I was so excited. He said, I heard you're a very good speaker. I said, that's what people say. My mother taught me self-praise brings no recommendation. He said, I want you on my program. And he scheduled me and I went in and I did the show two different times. Listen to me. He got through 2020. He got through 2020. Against all odds, you showed up. You have favor with God. You showed up. There is something that you're supposed to do. And it's not the same thing you've been doing already. Make a radical change. All of us are the same way. The only thing that separates us are the choices and our behaviors. Listen to me. Our choices, our behavior, our habits. And we'll be a team, a community of greatness, of people working on their goals and their dreams because you can't do it by yourself. Especially now, all this stuff that's going on right now, no. No, I cut my hair because I didn't wanna see the same person in the mirror in 2021 that I saw in 2020, no. Uh-uh, no, I'm working on myself. Got on a scale and it was less of me today than yesterday because I'm serious. See, so you've got to be serious. Yeah, no, 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 no. You got to be serious. You got to hunker down. You've got to be anchored in your mind. And why? Because we don't know what's coming. Life is stalking us. Look behind and thank God. I want you to do that right now. Just look behind right now. Just reflect on this past year and your life. And you woke up this morning. You woke up. Just so many ways you could have been taken out. So today, I want you to visualize the goal that you want to achieve. Because the foundation, you got to build the foundation. But I want you to make a commitment. I, I, I've made a commitment to take better care of myself, to get off my medication. I made a commitment to be more productive, to be more impactful. I made a commitment to please keep a closer contact and build closer relationships with my family and with my friends. I've, I've made a commitment, have more quiet time and exercise and, and doing the things that will indicate that I plan to, to die at young, at an old age, taking care of myself. You owe this to yourself. You, you have something special. You have greatness in you. And in order to get that greatness out, only 1% of people achieve greatness. Only to do that and have the kind of impact you want to make in the world, got to be hungry. Got to be hungry. And for those of you that want to speak, I got something for you too. Got some videos. I want you to go to Hungry to Speak dot com hunger to speak dot com and I'm, I'm giving both of these away yes why god's been so good to me i'm here because of his grace and mercy and i'm thankful for you you're listening to me for your honoring me with your presence with with your listening to the products that i produce and you're making the dramatic changes in your life as somebody spoke to me and I became a different kind of person. I want to be to you what Mike Williams has been to me. I want to be to you what Mr. Leroy Washington has been to me. I want to be to you to what my mother has been to me. And some of you call me pops. They, they, they say I'm, they call me pops now. I'd be you the oldest one in the group, but my spiritual sons and daughters. Now, when you practice, listen to me, listen. When you make a commitment, if you're serious about your goals and dreams, because I've been reviewing this, when you make a commitment to do what you can, where you are with what you have, and never be satisfied, and be singly focused, focus on something you want to do, 
that's important to you, not to anybody else. That's important to you. And every day you take action steps at the beginning of the year. Why? Because it's easy to be become a victim of weapons of mass distractions. To be distracted, you miss some steps. So I'm giving you something simple and practical to do. Just talk to seven people about your dream. That's all I'm asking you to do. Seven people for seven days. Seven days. And for seven days, don't speak anything negative about yourself, about anybody. In the beginning was the word. Death and life is in the tongue. Listen, the book of life says, death and life is in the tongue. Why? Because we speak more death. Speak life, speak positive words. When you find yourself and you slip and you say something negative, say cancel that. Cancel that. Yes. And don't speak anything negative about anybody else. No, don't do that. Seven day mental diet. When you find yourself, we can't control the thoughts that come in our minds, but we can control the thoughts that we dwell on. Listen to me. This is how I got here. So when you find yourself thinking negative thoughts because of the weapons of mass distractions, they say, cancel that. See, we, we can't control the thoughts that come in our minds, but we can control the thoughts that we dwell on. Other thing is you look at yourself, look at your dreams, detoxify your life, write that down. See, I think that most people never achieve their true goals in life because they're surrounded with too many toxic, negative, energy-draining people. You've got to look at the people in your life and ask yourself the question, what is this relationship doing to me? How is it impacting my life? Am I a better person? Sidney Portier wrote a book called The Measure of a Man. And it, it, it's powerful, but I encourage you to get the tapes. I love his voice. And, and he said something in there. He said, when you go for a walk with someone, something happens unconsciously. It's not spoken. Either you adjust to their pace or they adjust to your pace. Whose pace have you adjusted to? See, you want to surround yourself. My, my daughter, Ona Brown, who's a speaker and coach, she says, call forth your team, but make sure these are people that you can learn from. i never forget, I'm on a special board with a, a Bishop T.D. Jakes, and we went into a board meeting. He looked at everybody before opening the meeting. He said, as soon as I know as much as you do, you're fired. And with that, the meeting is now open. Everybody continued to learn on that board. <laughs> Trust me on that. A friend of mine, Dennis Kimbrough, motivational speaker out of Atlanta, he said, if you're the smartest one in your group, you need to get a new group. So as you look at yourself and look into the future, call forth your team. Uh, George Frazier says, your network determines your net worth. Who do you allow to be in your ear? What kind of relationships are you developing? Are they an asset to you or they are a liability? Do they elevate your spirits or do they tear you down? They get two types of people, nourishing people and toxic people. Nourishing people, they bring the best out of you. They encourage you, they inspire you, they hold you accountable. Toxic people, they are critical people, always telling you what you can't do. They're always measuring your possibilities based upon their failures. My mother said, never let anybody tell you what you can't do, son, especially if they haven't done it. <laughs> they don't know what's possible for you. So as you begin to look at yourself, begin to identify the relationships that you communicate with most and say, hey, is this relationship helpful to me? And then think about some people that you need to bring into your life that you can learn from, that you can grow from. I joined the National Speakers Association when I decided that I wanted to speak. I wanted to, to be around the people that were doing what I wanted to do. I'll never forget what I saw Dr. Norman Vincent Peale. He said, you, you have something special. You have greatness within you. And you can do more than you can ever begin to imagine. And here I am. And the audience said, oh my goodness. I'd read The Power of Positive Thinking 17 times. My hero. And I saw him backstage and 
I said, Dr. Peel, hi, my name is Les Brown. I, I've listened to your tapes and I, I've read your books. Uh, they gave them to us in special education, sir. And one day I would love to be on stage with you. And he looked at me and said, it's possible, young man. It's possible. But this man, when he spoke, he gave me goose pimples. Deep baritone voice, dope spoke from his diaphragm. You have something special. You have greatness within you. He override the inner conversations in my mind. I, I'll never forget um, a, a gentleman, what a brilliant man, a Harvard graduate, um, Dr. Carter G. Woodson. He said, if you can determine what a man shall think, you never have to concern yourself with what he will do. If you can make a man feel inferior, you never have to compel him to seek an inferior status, for he will seek it himself. And if you can make a man feel justly an outcast, never have to order him to go to the back door, he'll go without being told. And if there's no door, his very nature will demand one. See, we live in a world where we're told more about our limitations rather than our potential. How many of you have been told that you couldn't do something? Raise your hands, please. You know, MIT did a study that if I say to you, you can't do that, that 16 people have to come along and say, you can do that, you can do that, you can do that, to neutralize that, and the 17th statement that you hear, you can do it, will be the one that will finally stick. So you have to watch who's speaking into you. You've got to begin to monitor your mind. And, and you've got to begin to literally be proactive in programming yourself to success. Be ye not conformed to this world. Be it transformed by the renewing of your mind. You've got to take responsibility to make that happen. And as you begin to do that, you'll begin to see some incredible changes in your life. I understand now when Earl Nightingale said, all of us are self-made, but only the successful will admit it. As you begin to look at your dreams and look at your goals, write this down. Make no your vitamin. You know, we're not supposed to question God, but he said, in all thy getting, get, it, get some understanding. Well, Lord, I'm not questioning you, but I just want to get some understanding. <laughs> oh, behave. Hello? This thing, this, this, called, <laughs> this thing called life? Woo. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. I'm going deep on you today. I'm laughing, but I'm dropping some stuff. As these young folks say, I'm dropping some knowledge up in here and teach you how to get unstuck, how to reach your goals, how to use your voice, how to make money with your voice from home. More people are working from home than in buildings now. Before the coronavirus, the corporations found a way because of technology that people can work from home and they don't have to pay for those large buildings and their maintenance and the air conditioning or the heat. It's economically more feasible for people to work from home. Hmm. Let's think about that. So this is, this is the new economy that's being generated from home. You want to learn how to make money from home with your knowledge, with your skills, with your dream, with your voice, with your story. If you're ready to live life on your terms, on your terms, come alive. You've got some stuff. You're God's miracle child. You have some value. That's why you're still here. You think it's some accident that you still got a, a pulse that you that you're not taking a dirt nap today is the best day of your life what do you mean mr brown i'm in i'm in debt to up to my ears what do you mean i i i've got all types of illnesses the compass and the bunkers what do you mean by that if you don't think it's the best day of your life try missing one i didn't bite my tongue i said this is the best day of your life Use it, take action to maximize it. Use it effectively. And when you think about yourself here, you have favor with God. There's some things we take for granted. Being here is not a given. You are here because you have a favor with God. Mm -hmm. You've been protected. You've been shielded. Nothing will prosper. None of your enemies, none of the adversities, 
none of the hard times in life, none of those things will conquer you because greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. You are more than a conqueror. Woo. That's a powerful word up in there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you're supposed to live right here, right now. But this is the time you got to learn some new stuff. Money is being generated in a new way. How do you know this? Because I make some of it every day. <laughs> and I enjoy it. I feel better when I have money. Yes, I do. I don't have to take my blood pressure medication as often. Yeah, I mean, I feel so much better when I don't owe peepers. <laughs> and I don't have to disguise my voice when they call me. May I speak to Les Brown, please? I'm sorry, but he's not here. <laughs> oh boy, I had that down pat. <laughs> I know I'm not the only one. Yeah, they have call ID now. We can see who's calling us now. <laughs> Get ready to write a new chapter for your life. Get ready to live a life that will outlive you. Get ready to the, rob the cemetery of your gifts and talents and abilities. Get ready to be in a fight mode. Life is a fight for territory. And once you stop fighting for what you want, what you don't want will automatically take over. Stuff's gonna happen to you. Things are coming after you right now. Tragedies, hard times, sickness, pain, all kinds of things are coming after you right now including blessings, including opportunities. And you want to take advantage of the opportunity and the lifetime of the opportunity. Make a move for you. Make a move for your dream. Make a move for a better future. Don't sit there watching and wasting time looking at Netflix and all that other foolishness out there. A friend of mine said, oh man, I got 500 channels on my TV. Who's got time to watch 500 channels. Herein my father glorify that ye bear much fruit. Excuse me? No. Watching garbage day in and day out. How do you things expect things to get better for you? People say, oh, garbage in, garbage out. That's a lie. Garbage in, garbage stays. It makes you unproductive. It makes you cynical. You, you get in a depressed state of mind. That's not real. Garbage in, garbage stays, and it shows up in your attitude, in your behavior. It blurs your vision of what's possible for you. It's, it's a distraction. My son John Leslie is right. That people pay more attention to their distractions than their destiny. You have a destiny. There's something, there's a work, there's a greater work that you're supposed to do. These things ye shall do and greater things shall you do. In fact, you are here to do the greater things. And if you don't know that, ask somebody. Watch people who are doing the greater work and get around them and learn from them. That's what time we're here. That's what, that's the purpose. Not here just to have a good time. Yeah, you can have a good time. I have a ball. I enjoy every day. When they come to see my ashes, they'll see me smiling from the ashes. Mm. <laughs> yeah, they cremate me. They hear me say, Ooh, ah, oh, 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 He's got issues. Somebody get him some help, Tyrone. That's my squirrel friend. Tyrone said, you bringing it, you bringing, you kicking some knowledge right now. <laughs> I see, why you laugh so much? Because these walls are closing in on me. That's why. Because I can't go nowhere. This, this, the virus we've been fighting already they, they, is still here. It, and, and now they say there's a, a mutation, another one that spreads easier and kills faster. So you want to know why I'm talking to squirrels? 
Mm, you are, you, do you really want to know that, huh? Why don't, you, why don't you come visit me? I'll see you through the window. And I, I'll put my water hose on you through my window. <laughs> my doorbell rang. Who is it? Ooh, I have a window I look through. Mm, <laughs> you got a box. Boy, they take off. <laughs> I come out. I do it like this as I get my box. And the UPS man be looking at me and say, mm, Lord, that would touch. <laughs> I crack up when I come back in the house. Oh, I have all my little Mickey Mouse underwear. <laughs> I thought by now somebody would call the police. Listen, there's a senior citizen. He's outside getting his boxes from UPS. And he got on some Mickey Mouse underwear. Can you... Can you help us out here a little bit? Indecent exposure or something. <laughs> oh, my God. You know laughter is good for you. One minute of anger. I studied psychoneuroimmunology. Psycho, the mind. Neuro, the immune system. Oh, boy, the nervous system. I study that. One minute of anger weakens your immune system for four to five hours. You ever notice when you get sick, people owe you money? They don't call much. <laughs> They're praying that you die. <laughs> so they won't have to pay. Say, well, he won't need that where he's going. <laughs> I remember when I got sick when I was invited. And um, Miss Range, she came to visit me. I said, Miss Range? She owned range. She she owned range funeral home. I said, you know what? I appreciate your kindness, but I really don't appreciate you coming to visit me because I feel like you trying to check out my measurements. <laughs> no, funeral directors and people who own funeral homes should go see people who are sick. Absolutely not. That's inappropriate. That's not nice. <laughs> I thought she was checking me out. <laughs> What's going on with him today? <laughs> Sometimes you got to laugh. Yes, to keep from crying. I said, Lord, wake me up and tell me it's a dream. <laughs> they got a mutation now to spread easier and we got to watch out for that one and we got to watch out for this one and we haven't got enough vaccines and enough arms and i got both my arms up now and i'm scared i put them back down because i'm scared if i get a vaccine shot i might grow a new ear out of my neck ooh, ooh. <laughs> 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 I love it. Your story has value. Your voice has value. You've got to learn in the new economy how to earn money virtually. And this is how you do it. How to come through this computer and be able to, in the attention economy, how to attract attention, how to hold the attention through the experience that you're able to generate and how to direct it, how to influence it and generate moolah. But boy, if you're willing to learn, mm-hmm. The possibilities unlimited. The possibilities of what you can do. Eye has not seen, ear has not heard, nor has entered the heart of mankind what God has in store for you. If you know how to attract attention, hold the attention, and direct the attention. Yeah. That's why it's a new economy, because everybody don't know how to do it. See, when you just give information, that only impacts two areas of the brain. But when you know how to create an experience with a story, with your personality, with your passion, with your laughter, with quotes, and a variety of other things, that impacts five areas of the brain. That fights dementia, Alzheimer's, and it makes you profitable. Yes, because there are people who want to invest in you. I, I, I just talked to someone who said, you know what? I want to put an extra million dollars in your pocket this year. I said, let the Lord have his way. Look at God. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I said, come on, brother. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 
bring it on, bring it on, bring it on. Yeah, I'm not making this up. I'm not making this up. No. Hmm. Sometimes you need some laughter, need a smile to distract you from all this stuff. You know, the air is different right now. The air is different. Maximize this. The drama has been minimized. It's just for a moment now. It's just for a moment. But you can breathe easier. You're not waking up saying anything happened today. No, it's just for a moment. Hard times have an expiration date. And so do good times. Let's take advantage of it. Let's get together and make something great happen. Let's get together. Let me help you get rich. Why? Because you feel better when you got some money. Do you hear me? Don't you let people tell you money is the root of all evil. People who said that didn't have any. <laughs> no, he didn't go there. Yes, he did. Hello. <laughs> How could he have so much energy at 75 and 76 on February the 17th? Because I love what I do. I love it. I love changing lives. I love making you laugh. I love making you feel good. I love inspiring you. I love challenging you to get out of your comfort zone. I love telling you, rob the cemetery of your talents because somebody inspired me. This is what I was born to do. This is what I do. Nah, so don't be mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> One of these faces, I don't know. <laughs> okay, okay. Ooh. Ooh. All right, JJ, all right, Jonathan. Okay, okay, okay. Having a fat flashlight, if you want to excuse me. A hot flash. I call them power surges. <laughs> Have a wonderful day today. You deserve it, Dolly. This is your day. Mm. I, I didn't want to wait till 12 noon. I want to get it out now. And, and l l let me share this with you. I said it earlier. The people that you interact with most, your inner circle, I like to call it. If you look around your inner circle, family members and friends, if they don't inspire you to create the next greatest version of yourself, that's, that's not a circle of power. That's a cage that's restricting your potential for discovering the next greatest version of yourself. Today, you have an opportunity. Choose ye this day whom ye shall serve to make a choice so that the future you, listen to me closely, the future you will say, whoa, I'm so glad that you made that choice. <laughs> this has been Mrs. Mamie Brown's baby boy. That's my story. Invest in yourself. You're worth it.